welcome everybody to the webinar tonight. So thanks for joining. Uh, tonight's webinar is the four key skills to take charge of your life. So my name is Janine Shaka, for those who may not know me. Um, I'm a certified silver method trainer. So I'll tell you a little bit more as we get into the presentation, a little bit more about the silver method. But in short, it's a personal development program and it's a dynamic meditation program. So the Silver Method is actually a four-day course, and what I'm going to be sharing tonight is a tiny little bit out of that wonderful program, and it's really just about giving people tools and techniques to help navigate life in the best possible way. It just gives you all the skills you need, you know, to live a happier, a healthier, because it's got a lot to do with mind, body, healing, and health, um, and more success for life. Anything to do from goal setting, goal achievement, decision making, and intuition. So two days intuition. So tonight's presentation, if I had to say, it's probably less than 3% of the Silver Method four-day program. It's a tiny little snippet. However, I do guarantee anybody who's watching that you will leave here with some tools and tips and techniques to apply in your life straight away that will give you um, as many benefits as what you apply. So the more you apply, the more benefits you'll have. I want to say welcome to my silver graduate because I've got a silver graduate here um, joining us and probably some more coming because I expect about another 16 people to come on who've registered. Um, but welcome to the Silver Method grads because they've done the four-day program and it's just wonderful to see them coming back and actually listening again to this one-hour webinar just to reinforce and refresh. And I think that's wonderful, so I commend you. As for the new people, I'm really excited that you've joined tonight because if you've never heard of the Silver Method, then you've absolutely online to the right webinar because by the end of this, you'll realize what a wonderful and powerful program it is, um, which I'll talk about the four-day program at the end. I won't talk about it now. So that one hour we're going to share together to give you the most value that I possibly can in this hour that we are together, or just hour and a half at the most, <laughs> is to share with you these four key skills. And these four key skills, I have to say, are absolutely timeless. They will apply to any job, any country, any era in time, in any culture. So that these four skills applied thousands of years ago for success, happiness, good health, and they will apply thousands of years in the future. Nothing um, will change these same four skills. And to be honest, if you've got these four, anything else in your life will click together and work. All right, so to begin, these are the four key skills. The first one is how to remain calm and focused even under pressure. So the first skill is really about managing and reducing stress. And this first skill, I have to add, is the foundation. It's got to be the foundation because you and I both know that if we can't manage stress, it interferes with absolutely every area, excuse me, every area of our life, from our relationships to our health. There's not an area of our life that it doesn't affect. So we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. So once we have that, um, that skill understood, and even by practice, because I'm going to share with you what to practice, and you become a person who can stay calm and focused, you then can build on anything to improve your life. So let's go to... Um, the one, the number two now. The second skill is how to have clearly defined goals. Now, many people say, oh, that's obvious. We all know we should have clearly defined goals. But the truth is, if you ask people, what do you really, really want? What do you really want out of every area of your life, from your health to your relationships, to your career, to money, to fun, recreation, travel, spirituality? No one really can answer just like that. So the first thing we need to do is get clear on what we actually want. Why? Because wishy-washy goals have got wishy-washy outcomes. And if you don't really know what you want, well, you're not going to get anywhere. You'll stay the same. However, if you get clear on what you want, the minute you identify that, your subconscious mind already starts working to assist you in achieving it. Then the next thing is, once we have clearly defined goals, how do we achieve them faster? Because we can achieve them. It might take longer than expected. But how do we actually go about achieving them faster and know 
that we are actively creating our own reality. Then the third skill is massive. It's so important. It's overcoming self-limiting beliefs. That's a very interesting one because we don't know what self-limiting beliefs we have. If we did, we'd all be perfect, but they just are subconscious. They're not in our conscious level of awareness, but they block us through certain areas in our life. So if you ever get the feeling, think about your life, where you're always struggling to make headway in a certain area, whether that's at work, whether that's with money, whether that's in a relationship, whatever it may be. If you feel you're struggling to make headway, it's because there are limiting beliefs standing in your way. So I'm going to help you understand how to uncover them and then give you a tip on how you can overwrite them. Then the last skill is really, really important to be successful. The first thing is how to make better decisions. I mean, if I asked you now, if you could suddenly become twice as effective in making decisions as what you were yesterday, don't you think you would be more successful in every area of your life? Sure you would. So decision-making is actually a skill that can be developed. In the wonderful book of Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, an entire chapter is dedicated to decision. It's called decision, the chapter's name. Just to emphasize how important it is to have the ability to make decisions and to make them swiftly. People who can't make decisions or are indecisive or procrastinate for a long time always get held back from success. So I'm going to help you understand how to make better decisions in your life. And secondly, how to recognize the right opportunities for you. Because let's face it, there are lots of things that happen in our life and lots of opportunities come and go. But how do we know that's the right opportunity for me and that one's not? That I need to go for, that one I don't. So how we do that, how we can make better decisions and recognize the right opportunities for us is through two things. Developing our creativity and our intuition. So why I say creativity is because actually developing the creative imagination is what develops the intuitive faculty of the brain. This is neuroscience. But also when you have more creativity, you're better at problem solving. People who are better at problem solving also tend to make better decisions. So they're all kind of linked together. So we'll talk about that towards the end. Right, let me black the screen and just talk to you quickly for a second. Science today has proven that each and every one of us has a blueprint for how much money we earn, how successful we are, the quality of our relationships, how much love we receive or respect we receive, how much love we give. Every single thing in our lives is determined by this blueprint. And this blueprint can also be termed your conditioning. Psychologists like to call it your paradigm. So I don't know if any of you know where it comes from. Does anyone want to guess? You can unmute your microphone. Does anyone want to guess where does this conditioning come from? Where does it originate? Any guesses? I'm going to unmute microphones because I don't know if you guys know that they are actually muted. So I'll just unmute all of you. Anybody want to just guess? Where do you think this conditioning comes from? No? No guesses. Okay. I'll go. It's from your childhood. From ages one to seven, mostly. It's called the imprint phase of your life. So everything that your parents said you believed, everything that your relatives said you believed, the media, your schooling, it all basically went into this little person's brain and you adopted beliefs of everyone around you. So the truth is today, you're not responsible for your conditioning. However, you are responsible for changing it. And we can change it. We can overwrite limiting beliefs. We can overcome any phobia. We can have mind-body healing. There are so many things that we can do. So basically, 
This conditioning is called, as I said, our paradigm. Now you've got to know this. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And almost all of our behavior is habitual. Hey, Susan, welcome. Is that you? Hi. Someone else has joined. So if you think about your paradigm, if it has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior and almost all of our behavior is habitual, it means that this conditioning that we have that started when we were zero to seven is actually controlling most of our behavior and running the patterns in our lives. And this is giving us all our results. So a very easy way for us to understand a little more about how the brain works. If you look at this little stick diagram, it comes from a doctor, Thurman Fleet. And he said, we all know what the brain is. The brain's an organ. We've seen pictures in a book, but no one really knows what the mind looks like or what the mind is. What is the mind? No one can actually tell you what is the mind. If they think they can, they really don't know. We know what the brain is, but the mind, no. So Dr. Thurman Fleet said, well, let's make an easy diagram to help understand the mind. Because once we have a picture, because our brain works in pictures, we can actually start to make impressions in our mind and actually learn to change our conditioning and our lives. So let's assume that this is a stick man and that big circle on the top, of course, you can see his head. And it's no coincidence the head is so much larger than the body. And I'll tell you why. Let's assume the top half there is called the conscious mind, where we do all our thinking. If we're having a conversation, you do your reasoning with your conscious mind. If you're analyzing something, you're using your conscious mind. The bottom half, let's assume, is the subconscious mind. Subconscious means sub, below, conscious, below our level of conscious awareness. And what I mean by that is you're not aware of what is going on in your conscious mind. Your, I mean your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is not aware of what's going on in your subconscious mind. However, looking at the diagram, it's the subconscious mind that controls the body, all the behaviors, even your health. Everything to do with your behavior is controlled by the subconscious mind and your body and behaviors gives you your results. So when we think about results now, this is what we're talking about. This is why we joined the webinar. We joined the webinar tonight because the areas of our lives, all of us, where we want better results, there's no doubt. I do, you do, we all do. So when we're thinking about how do we get better results, well, I see that results come from the behavior and the behavior comes from the subconscious mind. So let me ask you a question. What percentage of the time do you think we're operating on autopilot? That means habitual behavior run by the subconscious mind. I'd like you to come up with any guess, any number at all, and just shout it out to me. Please, everyone, just shout out. Is that right or wrong? No, which one? Just say what you think. 80. 80. Okay, okay great. I've got two answers. 80. Right, the answer is actually 90 to 95. I just was conservative. I said 90. Neuroscience has proven that 90 to 95 percent of all your behaviors and my behaviors are done without thinking at a subconscious level. The way we answer the phone, the way we speak to our spouses, the way we talk to our kids, the way we do anything, the way we go shopping. 90 to 95 percent of all your behaviors is run by your subconscious mind so knowing that let me ask you what is more effective to change your results is it more effective knowing this now that we change our results by using conscious effort and willpower the top half or is it more effective to reprogram the subconscious mind what do you think subconscious 100 percent now, for the big number, how many times more effective do you think it is to retrain the subconscious mind to change your results? How many times more effective would it be than to use willpower? Any guesses? Do you think a thousand? Two thousand? How many times more effective? Ten? Ten times? I don't know. The answer is 30,000. It is 30,000 times more effective 
to retrain the subconscious mind to change your results, whether that's health, and I'm, proving, I'm talking about improving any health condition, allergies, cancer, whatever it may be, changing results when it comes to money, how much money you earn, how happy you are in your job, how happy you are in your relationships, what kind of quality of relationships do you have with your colleagues, your significant other, your children, your parents, whoever it may be. 30,000 times more effective than trying to do it with conscious effort alone. Because in our subconscious mind, are all our habits, all the beliefs we hold about ourselves, our self-confidence, our self-worth, all of that's in the subconscious mind. And remember we said the paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And almost all of our behavior is habitual, 90%, as we said. So why I'm sharing this with you, why is this important to know? Well, the silver method works at the subconscious level. It's a dynamic meditation program. It means we don't do passive meditation where you clear your mind and go, um, it's dynamic meditation where we go into meditative state, but then we actively use the mind. So it's basically a scientifically proven, it's all based on evidence and scientifically proven. It's a scientifically proven step-by-step -step program of easy to learn structured techniques for personal success, health, and happiness. This program has been around since 1966. The only reason I mention that is it's the first and original personal development program. It's been around for more than 52 years. It's in over 111 countries around the world. And we reckon about 10 million people, I've been conservative there, have done the silver method. All these famous people you see there, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Louise Hay, Esther Hicks, Jack Canfield, they all did the silver method before they were famous. In fact, they give credit to the silver method for launching their careers. Wayne Dyer talked of the silver method in one of his books. Jack Canfield has a YouTube video talking about it. So the reason I'm mentioning this is it unlocks your potential. So what it is, as I said, it's a dynamic meditation program where you enter what we call deeper levels of mind. That just means you go into meditation and when you're very relaxed, you have stronger access to the subconscious mind where if we use creative visualization, guided imagery or mental rehearsal, you actually make impressions in the subconscious mind. And the more you do that, the more you visualize and see yourself doing this thing or being healthier or being more successful or earning more money or being happier, the more you make impressions in the subconscious mind and then over time you create new beliefs that way and once you've got a new belief it's going to become your reality it will manifest there's a saying what the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve so what it means to conceive it means you're continuously making repeated images in that in your subconscious mind then of course the silver method also has two full days developing your intuition which has got to be the single most valuable skill you could ever develop because it guides you. It guides your life and will never guide you wrong. Okay, so let's get into these four key skills now. The first one, how to stay calm and focused even under pressure. This is about reducing and managing stress. So as I said before, this is the foundation. This is the most important skill. We all know if we can't manage stress, it affects every single area of our life, from our relationships to our work, to our health, our sleep, our digestion, our intuition doesn't work when you're stressed. There's no intuition if you've got stress. So literally, you can keep going. There's not an area of your life it won't affect. So let's have a bit of a speed test here. I want you to go as fast as you can and say anything you like. There's no right or wrong. Just take part and have some fun. Welcome, Silvana. Someone else has joined. I'm um, sorry. Just shout out to me. If your microphone's muted, just unmute it there. What do you think are some early warning signs of stress? Go as quickly as you can. Any answers? Sweating. Perfect. What else? Indigestion. I beg your pardon? Indigestion. Indigestion, yes, 100%. Good. What else? Anxiety. Yes, anxiety for sure. What else? Uh, insomnia. Yes, it affects your sleep. Insomnia, if you have repeated ongoing um, lack of sleep, it can, yes, from stress fully, full on, yes. 
What else? Good. Um, tempered. Yes, bad tempered. Bad temper, yeah. Blood pressure increase. 100%. Blood pressure can increase. Your cholesterol can increase from stress too. Perfect. What else? Okay, you've mentioned quite a few. I'll show you what's on here. So we mentioned most of those. Um, being impatient, overly critical, crying too easily or not being able to cry. You know, people, when they're very stressed, they might even attend a funeral of someone close to them and they'll tell you, I haven't cried. I can't cry. That's not because they don't feel the emotions. It's because they're very, very stressed. Or a person can't laugh. It's a joke and everyone's laughing. And you go, oh, you know, it's not even funny. That can also be from stress. Or that awful feeling of being overwhelmed. That's a, uh, we all know that feeling at some point and it's really terrible to have that feeling of overwhelm. And then once you have overwhelm, it can go into anxiety and you can just have this continuous underlying fearful feeling inside you for no apparent reason. And that's really not a good way to live. So in terms of physical early warning signs, being forgetful, making more mistakes, leaving things out, you know, we spoke about sleeping, headaches, Definitely. Someone said uh, indigestion, that's correct, and dig digestive disorders. Also having no tolerance to pain. If you do have anything that can ache or give you pain, when you stress, the pain is exacerbated compared to when you're relaxed and calm, um, pain eases. Also being tired. How many people are tired and fatigued and you just can't have the energy to go on? That's from stress. One of the very first early warning signs of anxiety um, psychologists look for is shortness of breath in the upper chest, people who shallow breathe in the upper chest. And then, of course, poor focus or memory. So many people say they have a memory problem, they wish they had better memory. There's most likely nothing wrong with a person's memory. It's stress that interferes with the brain's ability to access the memory faculty of the brain. So what do we do when we're stressed? Any guesses what kind of behaviors we take? What do we eat or drink when we're stressed? Sugar. Sugar, perfect. What else? Alcohol. Yes, thank you for saying it. Alcohol, we have a drink. And in severe cases, we take drugs. There's also stress. Yes, any others? <coughs> Chocolates. Mm -hmm. Coffee. Coffee. Oh, perfect. Chocolate, coffee. Yes, eating unhealthy foods. Now, the reason that we do things like consume alcohol or smoke or chocolate or caffeine is because it makes us feel good when we're stressed. And the reason it makes us feel good is because these different products cause the brain to release two chemicals serotonin and dopamine the one makes you feel good and the other one makes you sleep well now i don't know if you know this but deep belly breathing in the lower part of the body in the belly deep belly breathing is a natural antidote to stress it actually causes stress chemicals to dissolve in the body the minute you start breathing deeply and slowly in the belly so it's a natural antidote to stress and it's free and it's healthy, it costs you nothing. So the first tip I have for you is to manage and reduce stress is to meditate daily. Now, some of you may say, oh, Janine, we know that. And I'll say, okay, a lot of us know this, but there's a whole different thing to know this and to apply it every day and to integrate it into your life so that over time you become a person who's calm and focused even under pressure you actually need it as a process over time through daily meditation and daily practice to retrain the body to get used to the feeling of deep relax that's why it takes practice people say well why do you need to practice daily well the body actually becomes reconditioned to being deeply relaxed, the brain as well. So then you become, the more you practice, the more calm you become as a person. And then what happens, if your stress shows up in your life, you go, whoa, this doesn't feel good. 
and you recognize it and it's like smacks you in the face. You say, well, I don't like this feeling. I can feel I'm getting stressed. My heart rate's going up. I'm sweating as Anthony said or whatever's going on. But you will know how to calm down quickly. So if any of you do meditate daily, wonderful. I don't mind what meditation you do. I just say, well done. Hats off to you. Good job. If any of you don't meditate daily, or you think to yourself, I don't even know how to meditate. I've tried. I find it difficult. Any issue like that, I would say, please download the Silver Long Relax from the website in the bottom left corner, silvermethodaustralia.com.au. Scroll halfway down the page. There's a box filling your name and press submit and you can download the Silver Long Relax. There's a short video box there. Just watch the video. It just helps give instructions on how to best get, how to maximize that, um, the use of the meditation and to explain certain terminology that we use in case you think it's a bit weird or the sound in the background, I explain that too. The silver long relax is 26 minutes. You just go from head to toe, relaxing your body fractionally, every part of your body. And then there's some benefit statements and health statements towards the end. Did you know that doing the 26 minute long relax of the silver method is equivalent to four hours of natural sleep, for the mind and the body. So if you're feeling tired, overwhelmed, stressed, anxious, whatever it may be, if you did that, you're literally giving your body such huge benefits by doing that meditation. So I'd recommend that at least once a week, but if you can meditate every day. So some of the benefits of meditation, anybody want to guess what they are? And I say alpha because when we go into meditation, our brain waves half the speed they go from about 20 to 30 to about 10, and that's alpha. So the alpha is anything between 7 and 14 cycles per second of the brain. You don't need to know that. But just know when you're in meditation, your brain waves slow down and you're in alpha. Anybody want to guess what are some of the benefits of doing alpha meditation? Well, I guess it just calms you. Slow down. Yep, it calms you down for sure, which helps you to de-stress. What, what else does it do for us? It helps you to focus. Perfect. Thank you. So if you meditate in the morning or at night, whatever it is, once a day, it's true. You'll be at work and you'll find you have a better ability to focus. Excellent. What else? You can think about the early warning signs of stress and just reverse most of them because that's actually what it, what it is, just with a few more. I guess you'll lower your blood pressure. 100%. So the first or the second one there. If you meditate daily, every day, for more than 30 days and obviously continue, don't stop, after 30 days, you would actually see a significant improvement in your blood pressure without the use of any drugs as well as your cholesterol levels would come down. You can stabilize blood sugar by meditation alone. I'm not a doctor, but all of us in the Silver Method, as trainers around the world, are happy and confident to tell people, if you can meditate every day of your life, you can manage diabetes too without the use of drugs and cure it completely. That's how powerful meditation is. It does relieve stress, we've spoken about that. Optimum health and boosting the immune system. Did you know that alpha is the most stable brainwave state and all, all healing occurs in the alpha state? That's why when you feel sick, you want to sleep because your brain wants to go into alpha because when you start to relax before you fall asleep in alpha, because it knows naturally the intelligence of the body when we're in alpha, healing is accelerated. You also get the feeling of being harmonious and, and have inner peace, that wonderful, calm, centered feeling. Someone said focusing and um, being focused. Yes, clear thinking. It also gives you more energy. Remember we said that stress causes fatigue. Well, it's the opposite. The more you meditate, the more energy you have. Very importantly, intuition. Intuition just gets shut off when we're stressed. So when we are calm, even in a stressful situation, and a problem needs to be solved, or we need a creative solution, the person in the room, that's the most calm you'll find. It's got the, the best creative problem-solving ideas. And also, when we need intuition to guide us, 
that something's maybe wrong or something we need to do or decision we need to take or direction we need to turn, that is most enhanced when we are calm and relaxed. And even whilst we're meditating, ideas of intuitive guidance can pop into your head. That feeling of being in the good, good luck flow state, good luck synchronicities, things you feel like, feel like, you know, everything's working out for you. That feeling that the universe has got your back. That wonderful feeling happens day in and day out when you meditate and also having more inspiration and being more creative. So there's a lot of benefits there. Okay, let's now talk about the power of your words. Who here has heard that words affect your brain? Yep. Okay, what have you heard about that? Negative words produce negative outcomes? 100%. Yes, and negative words or negative self-talk can actually diminish your performance. They've taken bodybuilders and told them to repeat, I am weak, just 10 times, even though they know it's an exercise and they can't lift the weight that they can normally lift. And straight after that, they tell them to say, I am strong, 10 times, even though they know they're doing an experiment. Suddenly, they can lift that weight and potentially even more than that. So words affect the brain significantly, significantly. There's this book written by two neuroscientists, Andrew Newberg and Mark Waldman. By the way, these two guys have both done the silver method and one of them was a silver trainer several years ago. These neuroscientists wrote this book, How Words Can Change Your Brain. It's got another title if you want to buy it online called How God Changes Your Brain, but it's the same book. And basically there, there's so many interesting facts and studies and examples of how just words alone literally can change our physiology, change our behavior, change our confidence levels, whatever it may be. So when it comes to what you think or what you say, just know this, the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between imagination and reality. So if you visualize yourself running and winning a race, like the Olympic athletes who train do, the body I mean, the brain thinks, well, you're a winning runner. You come first and you keep repeating that. When you get on the track, the performance is significantly enhanced through visualization because the brain can't tell that you've just done it in your imagination. Now, this is probably the most important thing you'll ever get to hear in your life. And it's a wonderful thing because if we can make impressions in our mind by using imagination of what it is that we want to create, you are going to create that. So that's the positive side of using imagination. However, there's also a negative side. And the negative side is this. In that stick diagram, that conscious mind at the top has the ability to accept or reject any idea. If you don't like what I'm saying, you can reject it. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you can reject it. Your subconscious mind has no ability to reject anything. Everything goes in and it takes it literally. So when you use the phrase, I'm sick and tired of the traffic, and repeatedly say you're sick and tired of this, of work, of the traffic, of this person, you're repeatedly telling your, your subconscious mind, I'm sick and tired. What's going to happen in no time? You're going to say, well, you've got 10 orders of sick and tired coming up. I'm going to deliver it. And you're going to feel sick, and you're going to feel exhausted, and you're going to have to lie in bed for a few days because you're going to be sick. So the subconscious mind takes everything literally. Why words are so important is we catch ourselves thinking when we use our words. If you can hear what people say, or more importantly, what you say coming out of your own mouth, you catch yourself because no one says any words until it's a repeated thought. So words are a symbolic representation of our thoughts. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking about yourself? Do you run yourself down? Do you tell yourself that you're no good, that you're an idiot, that you can't do this, you can't do that? Whatever you're thinking goes undetected by the conscious mind. It really does. By the way, 80% of the average thoughts of everybody, 80% of our thoughts are negative that go undetected by the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind never switches off. It takes all of these things in and actually affects your ability. You know that you could think a thought, a worrying thought, if you think it enough times, you create a worrying belief. Once you've got a worrying belief, you repeatedly think that thing over and over and over again, and it's going to become your reality. And you can change that by just changing 
your being aware of your words, changing them, and then being aware of your thoughts. You become so aware and you, you stop having negative thoughts. So here we go. Here's a quick mental house cleaning exercise about words or phrases that are negative. So anyone, just shout out, what do you think is a negative word or a negative phrase? I don't like. Perfect, don't like, what else? Never. Never, yes, never, for sure. Perfect, what else? Can't. I give up. Say that again. I give up. I give up, perfect. What a strong, powerful phrase, I give up. If you said that, I give up, do you know you shut off the brain's ability to problem solve? You actually just shut it off if you say I give up. Wonderful. What else? I cannot do it. Cannot. Thank you so much. It's the first word on the list. If we say I can't this, I can't that, again, you shut off all possibility. The brain will stop trying to find a solution. What else? Do you know that try is a negative word? Does anyone know why try is not a good word? Because it's an excuse to get out of it if it doesn't work. Correct. 100%. Thank you. It predisposes failure. So if we say, I'll try see you at 7 o'clock, hmm, you might not be there. But if I say, I will see you at 7 o'clock, you'll be there. If I say, I'll try finish this document by tomorrow, you might not finish it. But if you say, I will finish this document by tomorrow, you will do it. So here are some more. Um, Anthony said never. Never and always are red flags. You can write that down. Every time you hear the word coming out of your own mouth or someone else as never and always, nothing is never and nothing is always. They are extreme phrases that, call mis that cause miscommunication, especially when you speak to someone else. If you say to someone else, you never listen. But it's not true. No one never listens. Maybe they're not listening at that moment. And then you can say, which is much better, you're not listening to me right now. They might be more receptive to listening. But if you say, you never listen to me, they're going to be on the back foot. The same with always. Always this, always that. It's not always. The word but, it pre, it, like the word but negates everything you've said before that. So if you say, just think about the phrase, I love you. If you said, I love you, but, hmm, is it really... Going to believe, you're going to believe the person. So, 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 whatever, so don't try not to say but. Try to say and. Or, you know, if like I love you and what I'd like to discuss or whatever, far more receptive, far better. The word don't. So if I said to you, don't think of a whole lot of monkeys, you know, sitting behind you, throwing banana peels around and jumping on each other and, you know, throwing the bananas and, flinging them in the air. As I'm saying, don't think of these monkeys. You, you see pictures. You've all seen the monkeys in your mind. Not one of you haven't seen those monkeys, even though I said, don't think of the monkeys. So our brain works in pictures. If I said, think of your car, you think of a picture. If I said, think of your bedroom, you think of a picture. Think of your boss. You get a picture in your mind. Think of Paris. You get a picture. We think in pictures. The, the brain has no ability to think without pictures. So when you say, don't be late, what picture are you putting into the brain at a subconscious level? It's be late. To a child, don't spill your cold drink or don't slam the door, you know, or don't make a noise. Everything we say with don't, you're putting the negative picture into the brain of the other person. So we should rather say what we do want. You know, please be on time. Please be careful drinking that cold drink. Please close the door softly as opposed to saying, please don't. All right, some other words that are negative are hate. Just that you know, when you use the word hate, the stomach produces acid immediately, without any context even. If you say, I'm tired, how many people do you know when you say, hi, how are you? And they respond most of the time, ah, I'm okay, I'm tired. I know people like that, they're always tired. And do you wanna know a secret? Do you know why they're always tired? Because they keep saying it. Did you know that if you're not at all tired, if you're highly energetic and you repeat it, I am tired 10 times, you're going to feel suddenly more tired than you were. The brain takes everything literally. The word should. 
The word should is a negative word because every time you say, oh, I should have remembered to bring this, I should have done that, you inflict self-guilt. You create guilt. Instead of saying should, you could say something like, next time I'll make sure I do whatever it is. But you say, I should have remembered this. Should... You're just feeling bad about yourself and you're knocking down your own self-confidence and your own self-esteem. There's so many negative phrases. We could go on and on and on the whole night. I just want to give you some of the main ones here. The, the phrase saying something's a pain in the neck or a pain in the butt. My friends never use that word again because the brain takes it literally. There was a lady in my silver class um, just recently and I was talking about this and I was using the term can't stand this, I can't stand that, I can't stand it when I sit in traffic, I can't stand it when people do whatever, leave a mess or litter, I can't stand people who litter. And I was talking to um, them about the phrase can't stand and how the brain takes it literally and people generally have problems with their feet, their legs, their ankles, their knees, something to do with standing. And this woman said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. She said, my mother used that phrase her whole life she had problems with her legs. She put that into me as a child and I use that phrase too. And you know, I've always got painful legs. Now, I'd like to go on and give an example of someone who caught themselves saying pain in the butt and had lower back ache for a very long time, did the silver method and the trainer, Ken, who trained me, he picked it up on the woman and one day made a joke and said, hey, you know, if you've got some lower backache going there, and she goes, oh, Ken, are you, know, are you psychic? How do you know? She says, well, you're always using the phrase pain in the butt, pain in the butt. She goes, oh, you don't think it's that, do you? He said, yes, I really do. Quit saying that. Just quit saying that completely. Do you know that woman's pain went away? No drugs, no doctor, no change, no exercise, no different bed, no different chair, no nothing. She just became highly aware of using the term pain in the butt. So some of you might think this is semantics i'm here to tell you this is neuroscience and books and books are written about this using the term it's critical nothing is critical i see you wards in the hospital are critical things are important not critical so quit saying that too so here's a technique for you based on the silver method um it's a it's it's called a pattern interrupter it's cancel cancel it's called the cancel, cancel technique. So what you do is this, you have a negative phrase, like let's say, oh, I can't learn this. You catch yourself having a negative phrase. The first thing you do, whether it's out loud or in your mind, but better in your mind, because people who don't know this presentation or done the silver method will think you're a bit crazy to go cancel, cancel out loud. It doesn't matter, in your mind, the mind's listening. You go cancel, cancel, somehow, some way I can learn this. Or if you say I'm tired, you catch yourself saying I'm tired, Go cancel, cancel, and say what you do want. I could do with more energy right now. I could do with a good night's sleep tonight. Tell us what you want. I could do with a good rest. Don't fake it and lie like, I'm tired. Oh, cancel, cancel. I'm energetic. Because if you really are very tired physically and you say, I'm energetic, there's dissonance. The brain knows you, you're physically tired. It's not, not, it's not stupid, but it doesn't, it doesn't marry up. So when there's dissonance, it doesn't work. So you've got to meet yourself where you believe it. It's got to be something that you can accept and believe. So if you say, I'm tired, cancel, cancel. I could do with more energy right now. I could do with an afternoon nap. I could do with a good night's sleep. Say what you want. If you say um, to someone, you know, don't be late. Just in your mind, just fix it up. Say cancel, cancel. Please be on time. Um, Never run yourself down. Anytime you catch yourself running yourself down or you say, I'm an idiot, I'm stupid, I shouldn't have done that. Cancel, cancel. Next time I'll be better and I'll do whatever. So that's the, that's the answer. That's the antidote. The minute you caught yourself with a negative comment, say cancel, cancel. And then please, 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 you must reframe with a positive statement. So every time you say something, you build what we call a neuro pathway. It means you're building a connection, like a circuit between brain cells and you actually build brain cells doing it. I know this sounds a bit much, but it's true. So when you're repeating thoughts, the more you repeat them, the more strong these neuro pathways are 
And eventually that just become a habit. How we think is a habit, by the way, how we speak is a habit. I think that's on here. Oops, that doesn't come on. Okay, how we speak is a habit. So when you can catch yourself saying, pain in the butt, or I can't stand this, so they're just habits. We just gotta correct them one at a time over time. When you say cancel, cancel, and reframe, you literally stop that old neuro pathway, and the subconscious mind listens, then you reframe it with a positive one and you build a new neuro pathway. You do it once, you do it twice. Once you repeat it, that becomes a new habit. Now remember I said 80% of all our thoughts, we have 70,000 about approximately a day, are negative and go undetected by the subconscious mind. This, my friends, is probably the most underestimated technique. It sounds so simple. I'm urge you apply this in your life teach it to your kids teach it to your friends teach it to people at work pick each other up on all negative talk cancel cancel and reframe it in a positive way i hope that people don't cancel tonight cancel cancel i really hope more people join tonight put everything in a positive statement because the truth is negative thoughts give negative outcomes positive thoughts give positive outcomes. A negative thought can never, ever, ever give you a positive outcome. So if you want better results in your life in any area, become highly aware of what you're saying because it's a reflection of what you're thinking. And I've got better and better at the bottom, then I'll tell you why. The Silver Method, we love better and better. It doesn't come from Jose Silva, he's the founder. He got it from some pharmacist years ago, I think in the 1920s who just told half his patients who were on the same medication for the same cancer conditions to just say every day in every way, I'm getting better, better, and better 20 times. And the other half is he didn't tell that to. Did you know the patients who did that affirmation every day had significant improvements, either went into remission or got cured from the affirmation alone. So this started a whole understanding of the power of the mind on body health healing. So Jose Silva, the founder of the Silva Method, he took that and he adopted it. It's in the benefit statements in every meditation in the Silva Method. We say, every day, in every way, I'm getting better, better, and better. So think about better and better. And if you can use it whenever you cancel, cancel. So as an example, I can't easily remember people's names. That's a negative statement. Cancel, cancel. I'm getting better and better at remembering people's names. And make a commitment from that day on, whenever you want to say you're bad at remembering names, just say, I'm getting better and better at remembering people's names. Just keep affirming that. I'm getting better and better at remembering things. My memory is getting better and better. Just keep affirming it. My friends, it will change your memory. You will see an improvement. From tomorrow on, when someone says, good morning, how are you? I want you to answer better and better. When someone says to you tomorrow, so how's work? I want you to answer better and better. How's your business? Better and better. How's the family? Better and better. Just say better and better as often as you can. Your brain takes it literally. It will start to manifest better and better in your results, in your health, in your life. Okay? So I hope that was helpful. So step one, just to remind you, how to remain calm and focused even under pressure. It's managing and reducing stress. Tip one, meditate daily. Download the silver method. And tip two, the cancel, cancel technique. Right. Number two now, having clear goals and achieving them faster. As I said, people don't know what they, what they really want out of life. So the first thing we're going to help you with is giving you a technique that you can use to get clear on what you want. Then we're going to share how you achieve your goals faster. Because to achieve our goals, we have to stay positive, motivated, and focused. Focused means just like we focus a camera. If you can't see the image and it's blurry, well, you'll never, if it's very blurry, you'll never really know what it is. The brain is the same. The clearer your goals are in certain terms, the more the subconscious mind will do whatever it can with a persistent type of determined attitude to get that thing for you if you repeatedly have a clear goal in your mind, if anyone's read the book, Think and Grow Rich, it says the same thing. You get absolutely clear on what it is that you want to create and you repeat it in certain terms day in and day out. 
So how to define what you want and how to get there. Here's something what I call the what do I want reflection. So what do you do is this. You take 10 minutes out. Don't be disturbed on your own. Sit in a chair with a pen and paper and write down these questions that I'm going to give you now. Here's the first one. Write them down and just close your eyes. Take several deep belly breaths for two to three minutes until you deeply relax. The longer you relax, the better. Try and get so deeply relaxed you feel like you're in a meditative state. Then open your eyes, read the first question. What do I want to create? Close your eyes and relax. Whatever comes to you, write it down. Now, the reason I say this is important to relax and meditate beforehand is because when we ask a person this at the conscious level, they come up somehow with different answers to what they do in a meditative state. And when they do it in a meditative state, the answers they get are very, very wise and they're very, very intuitive. And they come from what we call any term you use your higher self, from your soul, from a higher place from infinite intelligence, from somewhere that would only guide your life right. So take the time to calm down and be relaxed before you begin. So here's the first question. What do I want to create? Be specific that you use that exact wording because every time you tell yourself, what do I want to create? We are affirming. We create our own reality because whether you're aware of it or not, you do create your own reality with your thoughts and with your emotions. If that's something new that you haven't heard before, I urge you, watch the movie The Secret. Please, if you haven't seen the movie The Secret, it's a must watch. So you understand, you create your own reality with your thoughts and your feelings. That's what the law of attraction is. So when you say, what do I want to create? We're affirming that we create it. The next question, why? Why is linked to purpose. The minute you introduce why, you become stronger with your motivation to achieve the goal because you're saying, why is this valuable to me? And what I want you to put there is what are the benefits? If you achieve that goal, whatever goals you've written down, what are the benefits? How will it make your life different or better? The next question, what talents and strengths do I have to create this? What a beautiful question. Why? Because I'm asking you, what, what, what are you good at? What are you strong at? Because we want to work in our strength zone. My friends, if anyone tells you to work on your weaknesses, it's a lot of rubbish. The only weaknesses you work on are chronic negative thinking, you know, negative patterns of behavior, procrastination, um, having a negative mental attitude, things like that, 100%. Work on those, make them positive. But when it comes to talents and strengths, You've got some. Every one of you have got very specific talents and gifts. Use those in your life. Because when you do things that you're good at, you love them more. No one loves to do anything they're not good at. You'll be unhappy in that job for the rest of your life if you don't do it well or it's not in your strength zone. Whatever strengths you have, find yourself a job in that area if you can and work in your strength zone well anyway it comes to your goals you want to know what strengths you have then you say when do i want to create this put a, a date there you might not hit the exact date but let me tell you there are so many stories about people manifesting the most incredible things right at that date if you don't it's not the end of the world it's fine the subconscious mind has a target at least. It's got a date. It will aim for that. Okay. If it takes longer, it takes longer. It's okay. But have a date and keep convincing yourself. That's by when you want to have your goal. The next question is the last one. How does this relate to others? This is beautiful because what we're looking for here is the extended benefit factor. If you achieved your goals, how would it improve the lives of others, one or two other people in your life. Think about money. If you had a money goal and you had more money, how does this relate to others? I mean, just think about it. You could do more things with your family. You could take more holidays together. You could donate more money to charity. You could help people less fortunate than you. If you achieved a health goal and you were in poor health and you suddenly became fit and more healthy, how could it benefit spending time with maybe grandkids or children and 
you know, just being more fit, doing more things and activities that you couldn't do before, whatever it may be. Whenever you find how do your goals being achieved relate to others, you increase the purpose, it makes you more motivated. It makes you more focused. And it gives you more purpose. Okay, so there are the questions. That's the first tip, how to get clear on your goals. Now, how do we manifest them? How do we stay focused and motivated and achieve them? Well, every personal development person on the planet is talking about gratitude somewhere, somehow in their seminars. Why? Because it's scientifically proven. The more gratitude you express, both inside you, in your thoughts, in your feelings, and even more so outside of you, by talking about how grateful you are, it does so many things. It raises what we call our mood. It raises our vibration, if you, for lack of a better term. It makes us in a state of being where we are appreciative, happy, grateful. And when you're in that state, because the law of attraction is a universal law, you can also term it the law of vibration. You can Google that. It's a, it's a universal law. Whether you believe in it or not doesn't matter. It applies. So the law of attraction says, you're going to attract like to like. Whatever you're feeling, you're going to attract more of that. If you're going to be worried and angry all day, you're going to attract experiences that are going to make you more worried or more angry. If you're happy, grateful, and appreciative for extended periods of time in your day, you're just going to attract more things in your life that make you grateful. So you should make a daily habit of holding a gratitude journal. Get one. But when you do it, Enjoy it. Don't make it homework. Oh, I want to do my gratitude journaling. Do it with a full heart. Do it with a happy heart. Take the journal and say, you know, I've had a wonderful day. I'm going to sit here and find things that I'm so grateful for today and enjoy it. And the more you can feel good about it and really getting to the point of being appreciative, you're changing your mood and energy. And that's how you attract the things into your life that you want. So this feeling good feeling, this is going to sound very odd, but this is how it works. If you get a good feeling loving your dog and it makes you really happy or your cat or looking at a photo of a family member or your child or a grandchild, if that makes you feel good, do more of that because that will manifest money in your life. They might not even be related. As long as you're feeling good, you attract more into your life that makes you feel good. So all the things that you want, you attract in when you feel good, even if they're not related. If you find any way of feeling good, so that's why gratitude journaling works. Secondly, surround yourself with people who can support you. Any personal development guru talks about that too. It's so true. You know, we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So think about who you surround yourself with. Be aware of negative people in your life. I'm not saying this to make you lose your friends. I'm saying this to make you aware of your happiness, your health and your success. Negative people will drag you down if you don't know how to manage yourself. The best thing you can do is find people or groups or meetup groups or Toastmaster events or anything where you've got positive people around you that want to help you thrive and want to support you. So for those of you like Susanna on the call tonight, for example, who's done the silver method, you know, you have a circle of people that will always be there to support your silver method. You can contact each other, help each other. If nothing else, you can join a webinar like this. If nothing else, you can join my Meaningful Monday, first Monday of the month, just to stay with motivated, happy people, or you can review. So find yourself people that can support you. If you want to get better at fitness and exercise, join a gym. Why? Because there's supportive people there. So whatever it is you want to achieve, if you want to know about making more money or being successful in starting a business, join a meetup group of people who are doing the same thing. Join any group that's doing the thing that you want where people will encourage you. Okay? So there we have it. That's step number two. Get clear on your goals, achieve them, gratitude journaling, and of course, visualize daily. If anyone doesn't visualize daily, I didn't even put it in here, it's an absolute necessity. Even if it's for five minutes a day, See yourself doing, being, and having what those goals are in your life and feel the emotion because the emotion is the creative force. The happy emotions of having your goals achieved, if you can visualize it using your imagination, 
that creates it. The emotion. Thought alone is very weak. The emotion of feeling, oh yes, if I had this, I'd feel amazing. That's powerful. And the subconscious mind, if you want to make these impressions in, by the way, as I spoke about, is the emotional mind. So emotions are the driving factor. So just remember how you feel. And this is a good lead into the next topic. Overcoming self-limiting beliefs. We all have them. We're not aware of them. Here's how to become aware of them. Anytime you have negative emotion, there's a limiting belief in there. Whether it's about yourself, the situation, if it's a person that's causing your negative emotion, an event, whatever it may be, somewhere in there is a limiting belief. This may sound extreme to you, but it's going to, I have to say confidently, it's the truth. So I would recommend telling yourself from today, I'm going to be very aware of how I'm feeling. My goal is to feel good, feel good, feel good. That's going to, I want that to be your goal. Wake up every day and say, my goal today is to feel good. The more good I feel, the more good I attract in my life. Good luck will find you when you try to feel good. You look for things to feel good. You look for things to appreciate. Whether it's the fact that you can stand up out of bed on two legs and you can walk. Whether it's the fact that you can, excuse me for saying this, use the bathroom where some people can't use the bathroom without some medical issue. Seriously, we take for granted the fact that our bodies work, filter our blood, everything's working, your heart is beating, you can see through your eyes, the fact that you can hear this webinar, your ears, you're not deaf. Be grateful for everything. The fact that you've got beautiful, a beautiful country that's safe to live in. Do you know how many war-stricken countries there are in the world right now where people are struggling in a war-stricken place? So be grateful for everything and feel good. Now, the more you practice feeling good, the better you're going to get at it. It's like practicing anything. What do you practice? If you practice feeling good, champion. What's going to happen is the more you practice feeling good, the better you're going to feel over time, better and better and better. Then when you don't feel good and you feel bad, you're going to become more aware of it. And I'm telling you this because some people are so used to feeling bad and complaining that they don't even realize that they do that most of the time. Remember, what do you practice? If you practice grumpy about work, or whatever it may be, you are practicing something you're getting better and better at. Please understand me. I'm not trying to be pessimistic here. It's like picking up a dumbbell weight and doing this every day with your arm. You're going to develop a muscle. If you're going to complain about, let's just talk about work. If you're going to complain about work every day, you're going to develop that complaining muscle. It's a habit. Everything is a habit. And the more we complain, the worse outcomes we're going to have. The more we complain about work, the worse work is going to become. It's the law of attraction. Like meets like. So, as I said, make sure every day you wake up and your goal is going to be feel good, feel good, feel good. And when you're feeling bad, try to write down what it is that makes you feel bad. And just know that that's a limiting belief. And I'll give you a quick example to help illustrate this. Several years ago, I was working in a corporate job. I wasn't doing well. It was overwhelming when I joined the company. New industry, new job, new town, new country, the whole lot. I became overwhelmed. I became sick. I was very unhappy. So if anyone said to me, how's work? I'm going to say, oh, to be honest, I hate it. And I caught myself saying that I hate my job. But I had this awareness already then. And one day it dawned on me. I keep affirming that I hate my job. Hmm. What do you think I'm creating? What am I creating every time I say I hate my job? And remember, the subconscious mind is always listening. So when I realized that, I said, okay, what do I want? I want to absolutely love my job. So somehow, some way, I am going to, see the words on the screen, rewire myself for success. I decided I'm going to create a new belief that I absolutely love my job. Regardless of what the conditions and circumstances look like, people say, oh, Jean, but you're not facing reality. Never mind reality for the minute. Just, pay, just stay with me and listen. I decided to create a new belief. If I thought about the job I was in, I didn't love it. But I did love a job I had in South Africa before I emigrated. 
So I'd close my eyes on the tram every day going to work or the train or whatever it was. And just for five minutes, I'd imagine working in that other job where I loved it and I would bring all those emotions back and relive it and just keep affirming in my head, I absolutely love my job. I absolutely love it. The subconscious mind doesn't know. Everything's real. So if I'm absolutely loving my job, it doesn't matter which job it is, it loves it, okay? Then I just used to affirm it when I'm walking all the time. I knew somehow I'm going to change my belief. I did, my friends. Over time, it took a couple of months with visualizing every day and meditating every day, but I did change that belief. And I'll tell you what, five months later, I was successful in my job. Things were working out for me. My health was back on track and I absolutely did love my job. My clients never changed. My boss never changed. My work environment never changed. The office furniture never changed. Nothing changed. I changed. Right. What the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. So when I say any negative emotion is a limiting belief, you've got to believe it. People can say, oh, but you don't understand. You're not facing reality. I'm telling you, there isn't anything like reality. There's just your belief about it. If you believe that person's bad, they're going to prove to you repeatedly that they're bad. If you say that person's good and keep affirming it, they're going to prove to you that they're good. The same person. I know this sounds weird. They say we create our beliefs and then we prove them to ourselves. So it's about creating beliefs. So how do we wire yourself for success? Well, if you have a limiting belief or you know something that's holding you back or you uncover it by being aware of a negative emotion, now you want to overwrite it. In the silver method, we have a very specific technique called the three fingers technique. I can't do it here on the webinar, but I can give you something that's almost similar and will still work for you. The first thing is create a resourceful state. That means a state where you are confident, like the guy, you see the picture below? The guy who feels like he's winning, he's achieving, he's top of the mountain, he feels amazing, he's, he's proud of himself. We all have moments like that in our life, every one of us. Find that evidence. Reflect on your own life, reflect on your own success. Find, if you can, the one, proudest moment of your life then go into a meditation relax deep breathe slowly and relive it visualize it relive that entire experience with all your five senses see what's happening feel the emotions smell if there's smells hear the sounds relive it your subconscious mind cannot distinguish between imagination and reality you will have all the chemicals flowing in your body i'm talking about endorphins dissolving stress chemicals, feeling pumped, all the feelings of confidence are going to come back and relive itself in your body. And then when you're in that resourceful state, bring in your new goal, a future state, and then visualize it as if you've got it already and feel the emotion of having it already. So the reason we first want to create a resourceful state is we want to tell ourselves, I've done it before. I can do it again because you really can. Your potential is unlimited. Abraham Maslow proved that years ago. Your potential is unlimited. There is no end to what you can do. The only thing standing in your way of being anything, doing anything, are your limiting beliefs. So if you hold a belief that you can't have something or you can't be something, I'm going to tell you that's the biggest load of nonsense. You can. If you really want something, you can have it. You will never be given a dream without the potential to fulfill it. Source who created you is infinitely intelligent. You can never have a dream without the potential to fulfill it. So there's the tip for you. Use evidence, create that resourceful state, visualize, then incorporate your goal. In the silver method, we program this in with the three fingers when we're at the high point of achievement. And any time in the future, we just put our three fingers together, we can access any resourceful state, confidence, persuasion, being calm and not stressed out, not having a bad temper, anything that's a good resourceful state. So just letting you know, it's something that we do and it really does work. It's not magic, but it works like magic. Okay, so step four, make better decisions and recognize opportunities. 
So this is really about accessing your creativity and your intuition. Right, the two most effective tools for the 21st century executives are what? Can anyone guess? Come up with two words in your mind. What are the two most effective tools for the 21st century executives today? This comes from Harvard Research. But I'm sure you guessed one of them is intuition because we're on the subject. And yes, it is. And the other one is meditation. This comes from Harvard Research. And just by the way, when this was done, a university in Europe came up with the same research and another university somewhere else in America came out with the same research. And why I'm letting you know this? Because it might be unconventional. People might have spoken about other skills 10 years ago. But this is what it is today. So intuition is really valuable. Einstein said it's the only real valuable thing. So let's talk about this. There are some challenges with intuition. We don't really know sometimes if it's wishful thinking or fear or accurate intuitive insight. Or we have distortions with our intuition. What I mean by projection is your background, your upbringing, your frame of reference could be projected into a situation and you think, oh, it's intuition. I shouldn't trust that guy. But maybe your parents always told you never trust a second-hand car salesman. So now you go and buy a second-hand car and now you think you don't trust the guy. That's called projection. That's not intuition. So how do we know if it's intuition or fear or something you really want? Sometimes you want something so bad, you say, oh, it's a sign. It's a sign. I need to go and do this thing. Well, maybe it's wishful thinking. So what we really need is points of reference. We have challenges with intuition when we lack points of reference. So just quickly, a point of reference is something like this. We've all sipped a cup of tea that's too hot and burnt our lips. So we don't want to do that again. So that's a point of reference. Too hot, burnt my lips. So now if we bring tea to our lips without even thinking about it, the temperature of the steam on your upper lip will let you know not to take a sip. We are so intelligent. We don't even realize we're doing such a thing. That's because we have a point of reference. So when it comes to intuition, you need to have many examples of using intuition and getting feedback. Was I right? Was I wrong? Another example. So here we go. We need to develop accurate, verifiable points of reference. We need real evidence and actual experience. Lots and lots of practice. So in the Silver Method program, we spend two full days on intuition where you play games for three hours on the fourth day, detecting things and getting immediate feedback. Were you right? Weren't you right? So you say, ah, oh, so when I sense it this way, I'm correct. When I sense it that way, I'm correct. Now, for all of you on the webinar who have not done the Silver Method or will not do the program potentially in the short term or whenever, what I can advise you is be aware of your intuition. Start being aware of your gut. What does your gut feeling say? Is it a hunch? And always go with it. Always trust it and go with it. If it ever leads you wrong, take a step back, reflect, and ask yourself, was that fear or wishful thinking? You will start to refine your intuition. So that's an example for you. Okay, so that kind of rounds it up. Let me just recap on these four key skills. The first skill is to stay calm and focused, even under pressure. That's about managing stress. Meditate daily. I urge you, get the long relax and use it at least once a week, but try every day to meditate. Find a meditation that works for you. If you like the long relax, use it. If you want something else, download it. The thousands online for free. Use the cancel, cancel and reframe. Remember to reframe any negative thoughts you have in your mind. Just go cancel, cancel. Secondly, get clear goals. Do the what do I want reflection. Practice gratitude journaling. My recommendation is do it at night. The way you go to sleep is the way you wake up. Go to sleep grateful, you're going to wake up more grateful. Go to sleep worrying, you're going to wake up worrying. So try and do it at night. Surround yourself with people who can support you. Number three, overcome limiting beliefs. If you know of any belief that's holding you back or you realize potentially you've got some negative emotion, what is that thing that's upsetting you? State, make a statement and get the opposite of it. What is it that you want? Then visualize using a high point in your life where you had evidence, you've done it before, you were successful and then bring in that goal and try and achieve that goal. And then lastly, we spoke about intuition, um, helping you make better decisions and intuition will guide you in your life. It will never guide you wrong. So learn to trust it. So my friends, that's the end of this webinar. I'll just quickly share with you a bit about the silver, the silver method for those who want to know what, more about that. But was this helpful? 
Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, awesome. So if you'd like to expand on this or develop yourself further, the next step is up to you. Jose Silver, the founder of the Silver Method, he says, the greatest discovery you'll ever make, ever, is the potential of your own mind. And that is very true. Why? All your success is determined by your thoughts and your mind. All your lack of success, all your happiness or unhappiness, confidence, lack of confidence, achievement, lack of achievement, is all coming from your mind. Your mind is your most valuable asset. If you know how to use the power of your mind, as I said, your potential is unlimited. You can create, do, be, or have anything in, in, in your life. 